Hi, Mickey. Hey, Bob. Hey, what you got there? Is that like banana nut bread or what? What it's is a, it? It's a cake, Bob. What kind of cake? Oh, is it carrot cake? I love carrot it's cake. It's a cake. Oh. I don't love seeing people eat carrot um, cake. Uh, give us give us a break. Oh, my here. God. This cake isn't baked, Bob. It's oh all God. liquid inside. So wait, half baked. What are we looking? Uh, give me another clue. What are we? What are we moving toward here, They're Mickey? All, we're talking about the election, Bob. The all these commentators it's not fully are saying baked. it's not all fully the commentators baked. are saying the cake is baked. It's over. No, the die is cast. No, uh, and it's definitely not cast. They're wrong. Uh, it's the cake is mostly baked, but um, there are all sorts of factors. We have a more than a week left. Yeah. The filer faster thesis says things the public can process information incredibly quickly. For example, this attack on Pelosi, which is one of the Pelosi's husband, mm -hmm. is one of the factors, wild factors that happens. I disagree. Um, I, I don't. Uh, you see no. that having an impact on the election? No, I think the filer faster thesis says it has been processed two days from now, a week before the election, and it's not a factor. I don't think Even it was if, a factor anyway. I don't. I don't think they had the election today would be a factor. I mean, it's, that's probably true. it's unfortunate. It's a sad, you know, testament to where the country is that stuff like this happens. Well, if, and you're if, not you were, shocked, but. if you were a Democrat, you would say it's a sign of that Trump's radical views uh, are, you know, and the and the Musk purchase of Twitter is producing a climate in which, it, you know, these, you know, <laughs> well, these fast. unhinged, unhinged, gonna, unhinged gonna, elements are going to attack more and more uh, uh, politicians. And, uh, you know, it could conceivably have a little bit of traction. There are other bigger factors. I, I think the people who whom that narrative motivates are already motivated pretty much. Um, True. I, but there are other factors. On both sides. Yeah. What yeah, but I have, I, there are factors on the Democratic side. I have like four or five of them. One is Trump could back get back on Twitter and announce his candidacy, which would raise the Trump issue again. But now, but Musk said today that he's going to convene some council. Right, a diverse council. The council has deliberated. There will no one he's will be reinstated. He's brilliantly he's brilliantly put that uh, kick that can past the election. I think. Uh, I hope. Uh, but there are other people who've already been let on, and Trump may demand to be let on. Who knows? He may declare his candidacy anyway. Um, Wait, Never, what, the demanding biggest, demanding won't do anything. We're talking about Elon here. Who is the alpha here? Elon or Trump? Come on. Um, Elon okay. can get you to Mars. What can Trump do? Then he'll say, fuck you. I'm declaring my candidacy anyway. Maybe, but um, he won't be on Twitter. But it'll still, we're talking about the effect on the election. That would have a bad effect oh, for the Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest issue is Social Security. The, the Democrats have a credible claim that there are Republicans who want to you know, reform entitlements or cut entitlements, yeah. raise you the retirement this age. Anxiety we last talked time. about it. okay, but now that now it's now they are hitting it with campaign ads. And for people who don't know you, we should say that this is just your psychopathology playing out. You just lay awake at night thinking of ways that uh, you know your Republicans can lose. Well, so that's this true, is not some kind of objective analysis that anyone should pay attention to. In fact, I would recommend that is everyone the, tune out what, now. All go I'm to saying, a better podcast. But go all, ahead. I'm, all I'm saying is, what did you say about a better podcast? I said they should go to a better podcast, unless unless they want to see your psychopathologies play out, which is well, that's our play. unique selling proposition. But um, the uh, the cake. These are reasons the cake is not baked. These are not reasons why I I think the Republicans are yeah, but your not fear do that well. the cake isn't baked. It derives from your fear that the that's an expression of your fear that the Republicans won't do it because if the cake is baked, you're fine, right? In in this case, yes, but in the in, you know uh, with the Hillary, but, Hillary but you have Trump, long Hillary Trump, opposition to cake baking. In in Hillary, I have a long opposition to to overism. Mm -hmm. uh, in in 2016, the overists were saying the cake is baked, Hillary will win. I was saying no, things can happen, mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm consistent. This time I'm saying no, things can, mm -hmm. can happen, and. The Social Security issue has worked for the Democrats before. They have a there's a long argument over whether in in uh, the time that I think it was at ninety eight when people thought it was because the Republicans had gone too far in impeachment 
The Democrats are saying, no, it's our Social Security ads, which you didn't pay attention to, that work for us. Same issue, exactly the same issue today. Republicans are running in House seats, are running Social Security ads, saying that the, uh, the, the dangerous Republicans are going to take away your Social Security and Medicare. And it's worked before. So, so it de might Democrats work again. are running those ads. Democrats are running those now, ads. Now, is that a development since last week? Because last week, I think you brought this Social Security up, and I said, if it's such a big issue, why am I not hearing about it? Is this a new yeah, development? Th well, this week, th this week, we've seen the ads if you follow Politico. So you're uh, pressing. Punch so you're has pressing. them. So they, uh, well, there is no you, better You didn't have to be pressing to say Democrats were going to use Social Security mm. as their last resort. Although I would maybe was, anyway. I wasn't saying it, and I'm. I'm kind okay, of well, there you go. Um, th th it's possible that there's some sort of thermostatic reversion toward the mean. Uh, this is the third factor. Feiler would say those cycles happen faster than before. You know, Republicans have a surge, then voters have second thoughts. They drift back toward the average. Mm. Uh, so there's certainly time in a week for that sort of thing to happen. I don't think it'll, they'll switch back to necessarily being pro-democratic, but Whatever this last minute Republican surge. It's not just a are, week, it's 10, 11 days or something, right? Right, there you go. Right. It's an eternity, an eternity in modern politics. Um, and there's early voting. Dems banked a lot of votes before the, uh, you know, before the, the alleged Republican tsunami started happening a week ago. So Fetterman, for example, banked a lot of votes before the debate. Uh, I hope and, so. And, you and better we, bank a whole lot. Well, no, now he's turning the post-debate to his advantage by saying he's the victim of ridicule. He's just like every man. He's like Tom Eagleton. Who hasn't been hooked up to jumper cables? I mean, you know? Uh, no, Eagle wait. Let's be clear. Eagleton was. Fetterman wasn't, okay? Right, and, but Eagleton, and Eagleton, for you younger viewers, was briefly a vice presidential nominee until it was revealed that he had undergone electroshock therapy. Right, but, but the key to that is he had actually, before he was bounced by McGovern, Mm -hmm. He was a very appealing guy, for one thing. And yeah. he, had, he had turned that to his advantage. He mm -hmm. had gone on the late-night talk shows and been a human being, gave a completely credible account of, of why he was so depressed that they, you know, that they resorted yeah. to treatment. You know, he, he'd been campaigning day in and day out, and then he was exhausted. He won, and then he said, is that all there is? You know, the, the normal human reaction after a big effort like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and he was winning over. He was more popular than McGovern. He was winning over voters. Uh, and Fetterman is now winning over voters, perhaps with the same sort of appeal. It's just a factor. Could, could change. Is there the, any data? Is there any? There's no good polling data yet, right? No. Uh, this, is, this is mainly from a John Ellis tweet. But you know, anyway. we should just turn this, this thing over to John Ellis. You seem to derive virtually all of your insights from the John Ellis no, newsletter. No, because he... Uh, we, he had a big post basically saying the cake was baked, it's over. Uh, oh, so he's and, and, guilty of overism? John Ellis? He's guilty of overism, and I Ooh. criticize him for it. Good. But but now he's now he's sort of he's seeing this factor, this pro Fetterman factor that maybe means mm -hmm. it, it won't be over. I mean, mm -hmm. he was predicting he wouldn't be surprised if so, a, a Republican sweep. So his overism uh, is over. Is that right? His overism is over, exactly. Um, Excellent. Good work. And, but he cited Mark Halpern, who was even more over us than he was, was saying, you know, we can see this tsunami coming in and it's already leaking into our homes and the Democratic consultants are panicking and they'll tell mm -hmm. you in private we're going to be wiped out. And But, of course, the Democratic consultants may not have heard of the filer faster thesis either. So they may be prematurely saying it's over because, you know, and they want to curry favor with a guy like Halpern. So sure. hard as that is to believe. So. Wait, uh, I thought he was disgraced. Is he back? He has a Substack, Bob, mm. where he's he's saying it's over. The Substack is sort of the same as as the note his previous iterations were, and it's it, the, the the seams are becoming clear. I mean, he wakes up in the morning and he grocks the political moment, and he you know then he then he talks to five consultants and they he sort of mind melds what they're saying, but they might be wrong. So. Uh, and you yeah. know the uh, so what, it's entirely so what, is possible there another, that the Republicans have peaked too soon. So yeah, there's a whole week left. Is there another factor? Uh, no, I think I've run through them all. It, you said Pelosi wasn't a factor. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's all of them. But the big one is Social Security. Okay. 
Well, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, the the Fetterman yeah. debate was problematic. Now, I gather the deal is of like, so of like Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania, the Democrats have to win three out of four, right? Unless they get a surprise win in Ohio or something. That's right. right? What were the four states? Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. I think that's right. Um, so, but you know, they, they they could also get a surprise win in Utah. I don't think yeah. so, but but no, they can't get close. one. They can get be you know Bill Crystal's uh, neocon proxy in Nevada, who who is not a Democrat, who says he's an independent. And uh, you think if it's fifty forty nine, he's not going to vote with the Democrats. He's going to vote with the Democrats. Well, the things I care most about, of course, the things I care most about, you can't count on Democrats to support anyway. So never mind. I I, I retract the whole thing. Uh, the the um. It, and there could be a huge, there could be a huge Republican sweep if 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 Bennett goes down in Colorado. Is that a chance? Oh yeah, I mean it depends how off the polls are. The polls could be off by five points. Why aren't the and, polls ever off in my favor, in favor of the Democrats? Why is because that? it's Republican voters that don't talk to pollsters. Yeah, but wouldn't you think they, pollsters, they know they're part of the liberal elite? Wouldn't you think pollsters, in perennially trying to correct for last time's mistake, would eventually overcorrect and give us a pleasant surprise? You would think. You would think. But the, but the the short the short term uh, dynamics, are, of course, are to please the left with polls showing, hey, you know, it's not that bad. Or hey, the abortion issue has worked in our favor. So Which brings the short term seems to overcome the long term. Your, but yes, I would. The, various pollsters have said, I think on the right that they just they they they've run out of ways to try to compensate for it, aside from arbitrarily adding five points to the Republican total. So anyway, the the Fetterman debate was pretty painful. I I only tuned into about five minutes at the end, and I couldn't take it. The uh, it seems to me the thing he should have said early on, which I gather he didn't, because I heard a snippet of the the way he did prepare the ground by saying, you know, you've heard I had a stroke. I was knocked back down. I'm getting back up like so many people in Pennsylvania and so on. Seems to me he should have said, if he didn't, like, but I'll tell you something. I am a lot better than I was four months ago. And four months from now, when with your support, I can take office, I will be a lot better than I am now. I guarantee it or something, right? Shouldn't he, shouldn't he have gotten them thinking trajectory of improvement, extrapolate? I agree. Or maybe he could have said he'll appoint a diverse commission of doctors who will rule on his fitness before he takes office. Uh, I don't think that's the way to no, go. No, that wouldn't work. Uh, but that's, uh, but um, yeah, that would have been good. Uh, well, I didn't watch the debate because I feel why like Why am I, I not said, a highly paid consultant then? Uh, I don't know. I think you have nobody to blame but yourself. It's a marketing problem? You're, you're pursuing these dreams of empathy when they're two clear paths to you becoming very, very rich. And those are? Start a religion, number uh, one. I don't think I'm the type. What's the second one? Become a political consultant. Oh, you're right. Well, it's time for that. And you have empathy. You have too much empathy for your opponents. Though. Cognitive empathy doesn't know. You're, see, you're, even you're confused. Uh, no, I anyway. know that's wrong. Because you have a logical understanding of your opponent's point of view, you can beat them more thoroughly. Exactly. In there fact, you. last issue of Non-Zero Newsletter, although by the time people hear this, today's will be out, was about uh, Hitler and Putin and showing cognitive empathy for him. Doesn't mean sympathize. Well, does it mean sympathizing with him? That was the question I asked. Uh, answer. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, I think Ron Rosenbaum wrote a whole book trying to have cognitive empathy with Hitler. Did he? Yeah. I should read it. Called Understanding Hitler. Really? It's supposed to be very good. Yeah. I should have him on my podcast. Uh, I could live to regret that, but yes. Okay. Yep. Who's the guy who uh, Luke Gehrig substituted for? You know that story. Oh, speaking of which, uh, Bob, yeah. me what? and David Sachs would be happy to be that guy. <laughs> the uh, speaking of which, here's your, you know, you you pass yourself off as some kind of every man sports fan guy, and in fact, when people used to compare us to the Odd Couple, you always said, "Well, you're Oscar and I'm Felix." And I'm not such a sports fan. Strangely, people agreed. Don't take the wind out of my sails. I was about to okay. challenge you. Like, if, if you're such a sports fan, answer this question. The World Series begins, I believe, today. 
Okay. The question is, why is it that when I was a teenager, I never would have imagined a day when you would see a World Series featuring the Philadelphia Phillies and the Houston Astros? Why is that? Because uh, the Astros didn't exist back in 1920 when you were born. I said when I was a teenager. Uh, because the Yankees always won. See, this is, you are a fraud. Even though, even though you, you kind of play down your sports grade. Like they, you were deserve they, were zero. The, they were in the same league. A little late for that one, buddy. Probably no. can't even tell us whether it was the national or the American. Can you? It was the national. Well, Please. that's not nothing, I guess, but no, I'm sorry. You would have, you would have leapt on that answer if you were Oscar and I was Felix. If I were a tedious sports nerd. Yes. Anyway. Okay. Uh, let the record show I got it right. Um, All right. I feel a lot better. Uh, uh, but I, I don't pay that much attention to baseball. I should pay more. Now, what do you think, of, though, about this Elon Musk thing? I mean, have you tweeted since? Uh, did it feel oh, yeah. different? How did it feel? My, uh, well, I, I, it's like two things. It's a little like, um, it's a little like the rapture on my side of the fence. We are waiting this. We all think that Musk is going right. to act and the, he the heavens are going to go and our follower accounts are all going to rise to the heavens and we're going to have the reach that we always thought we should have. And I, 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 I share in this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think, I think I've been shadow banned and I would, you know, I get these tweets from people saying, I haven't seen your tweets in years, even though no. I follow you. So, you know, th that reinforces the sense. But what if the rapture doesn't happen? There's going to be a huge disappointment on my side. And the other thing is the hunt for the algorithm that shadow bans everyone. It's a little like the hunt for WMDs. What if they don't find this algorithm? Oh, they can figure that out. Uh, on the other hand, you know, I, I have two more. Fo my follower account has, has risen by two, Bob. See, that's fascinating. People on my side of the fence, we're seeing our follower count drop. I mean, I lost about 50, which isn't that much uh, as of this morning. But a lot of people are report. You know, there are clearly are people quitting in protest, and I guess they're more likely to be my followers than yours. So none of your ideological allies are seeing follower counts drop. I don't think so. No, I mean, mm -hmm. actually, actually, after I gained those two, I lost four, so I'm <laughs> down two. But uh, no, I don't. We're not seeing followers drop. Are they going to? You know, you know, there is a left wing site that is. Uh, I guess they decided to. Uh, to own it and and hang their you know hang a lantern on their problem they've called themselves tribal t r i b e l hmm. and their slogan seems to be we live to cancel <laughs> it's like it's like really that's great no i'm joking but they're, no. they're, 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 they 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 they've started off with like clearly they're in the mood to cancel uh hmm. and uh it's like only democrats welcome here fuck you republicans and trumpists and i think they're a little too to uh, over the top tribal to actually attract a lot of Democrats. And I think the Democrats will want to be in the same, you know, they will discover that they well, yeah. don't just like talking to each other and yeah. they want to stay on Twitter, but they might well, not. I, I think this, in a way, this is a test of the strength of network effects, you know, like network effects are the thing where, you know, the more people who are on the network that you want to connect with, the more valuable it is to be on the network. And right now, there's so many of those that very few people, I think, are going to jump ship. And the question is, how much would Elon have to antagonize people before, you know, significant numbers of significant people started jumping ship? You know, I, I think and I think there's a chance that he could do that because he's. You know, he's a guy to shake things up first and ask questions later, I think. And he's never done anything like this. His successes have been in, you know, conventional engineering, cars, rockets, not not social engineering. And uh, so we'll see. I I think I think he I smell the presence of David Sachs in all this. Uh, well, he, did, didn't did, show, he didn't show up on on the All In podcast last week. Oh, he didn't. Well, uh, he had and, said he was going to take time off. But I think he's taking time off because he's advising Musk on Twitter. I thought that wasn't the uh, stated reason in advance. I know, but it would be misdirection. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, I, uh, I, so so far Musk has not done that. He's been quite neutral, and uh, and I think he, re he realizes he realizes that if he pisses off the left too much. Uh, he, he's going to have a depleted asset, and it's not going to be a well, here, open he, public square. 
Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the other weird thing is like Twitter is now owned by somebody who is a troll. Let's face it. I mean, I mean, he just he just goes on Twitter uh, to fuck with people's heads and we'll see how whether that stops and if not, whether it drives people nuts. I don't think it'll drive people too nuts. I find it entertaining, but it's different from Dorsey. Dorsey was on Twitter. He said some things that people didn't like, but it wasn't his mission in life. Um, the uh, the thing that worries me is the is that he 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 will not shake things up enough. And and here's what I mean by that. You think you've been shadow banned? I think you're wrong. I think you have my problem, which is that you don't have a blue check mark. You're not authentic. You're not verified or whatever. Uh, and that you know. The verification thing is a completely indefensible policy. All you know, those people, all those people who put it in place are about to be fired. Yeah, but here's the thing. I don't think Musk can afford to suddenly deconstruct the, the verification policy because the people he most wants to keep on the platform want it to stay. Because I gather that, that, that there's this crude thing where um, if you're verified, I think maybe it's even the default. In any event, I think it's a possible setting. I'm told, how would I know? Little old lowly me, but I'm told by people who know people who are verified that you you can, uh, it is either set by default, you can't set it, so you only see the tweets of verified people. That's why you and I are fucked. And I, and, and I don't think we've been shadow banned. I just think, and, and, and let's just review the process, okay? This is so crazy. Originally, it, the point of this was for people who actually had people imitating them. They were so famous. They had people pretending they were them. And then it slowly became this thing where, well, if you're kind of important in certain ways, doesn't help to have written books, by the way, or have had New York Times bestsellers. And that doesn't count at all. But in the ways that Twitter deems important, if you're important, then you get verified. And so then it became just this class system, this two-tiered class system where Twitter decides who the important people are in America, and that's all it is. And that actually, when you think about it, is more pernicious than any of this cancellation stuff in the aggregate. I mean, they are choosing America's elites. And, right. that, and, I, and, I, I, and I doubt Musk will have the nerve to fuck with it. Well, he might even go in the opposite direction, although I don't know if it is the opposite direction, but actually create a higher tier and try to make people pay for it. Now that would well, he said that that. That, that yeah that wouldn't mean that that wouldn't mean that you're an American in America's elites though that would actually be less pernicious because anybody could presumably pony up right. two thousand dollars or however much it costs to be in this elite. It's like so, being published by Vanity Press. Yeah, it's like the doors of the rich are open to rich and poor alike. Uh, so you uh, could just start at least charging these people. Just say you you want to stay a you know be ashamed if something happened. Your blue check that'll be twenty bucks a month. I think. I think David Sachs will steer him away from error in this. Uh, Wait, what is the error? What is error? The error would be creating more and more elite, creating social inequality on Twitter where there are elite tiers. Well, that would be a moral three error. Tiers, three tiers instead of two tiers. Okay, there should be right. one, There should be one tier, and if you prove that you are the person who's named, then you get a blue check that says you're the person who's named. But what I predict, Elon Musk will be afraid to do is just abolish the fucking system, which makes no sense. And if he's really as idealistic about Twitter as he says he is, it's the first thing he should do. I think it makes he might do no that. no sense. We'll see. And I, I think, also, I do, th a, and, and two quibbles, I do think I'm shadow banned because why are all these people saying they never see me on their feeds? Because they have blue checks. They don't have blue checks. Name somebody who doesn't have a blue check who never sees you. There's a guy feed. I, I just... I just retweeted him. There's a, there's a guy who doesn't have a blue check who said, I, it's weird, I haven't seen you for years. Uh, mm -hmm. And and the other thing is, uh, well, I don't think the blue check thing is totally impervious because I, I got to actually, get, there was a heartening. Uh, yeah. Was there an earthquake in your neighborhood? Uh, there was a near disaster, but it was oh. it would have been not an earthquake. <laughs> a cup of coffee, maybe? Uh, would have been the, the computer. Don't I don't want to get into my tech okay. woes. Okay, let's but, just say that. Now, but, the, but the, the, the anyway, the, the Maggie Haberman was clearly pissed off by something I tweeted, 
And that's a compliment. Uh, and and she has a blue check mark, and I don't. So somehow she got wind of what I tweeted. Mm-hmm. Uh, now the my, the whole purpose of me tweeting is to get read by people like Maggie Haberman. So uh, uh, I took that as as a sign that the blue check mark paywall, not paywall, the the wall of blue checks is not impervious, impermeable, impermeable, and they, and they um. And she has all sorts of other defenses. She has a list of preferred people, so she doesn't really see everybody who comments yeah. on her, and et cetera, et cetera. No, it can happen. But, uh, I mean, first of all, she may have her settings. She may have intervened and or, or whatever, and maybe they're not default settings. Maybe I'm wrong. But there is something in between shadow banning, banning and the blue check problem, which is there was just the algorithm. The person who said they never see you anymore, they probably went six months without liking or retweeting you. And then the algorithm says, well, you're not very interested in him, right? That That's a whole issue, too. Bob, every indication or the Twitter was permeated by left-wing bias. Uh, they, they, I mean, it, 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 it's well, indisputable. You, look at look at what this 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 woman who just got fired did. I mean, they, they're, they're, you know, she suppressed the Hunter Biden thing. She uh, banned yeah, a whole at, lot of people. I mean, she was at that level, in, but, you know, well, she was in charge. She made uh, the final decision. I mean, we'll see. The good she made thing the about, final decision on what the algorithm did. The I'm good sure. thing about Elon Musk is if he goes in and he finds that there was all this shadow banning, whether it was algorithmic but implicitly anti-left or whatever, I think he'll tell us. Yeah. He'll, he'll, Supposedly, he brought in a bunch of Tesla software geeks to look for the look for the WMDs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when he showed up, so. We should know very shortly, I would think. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, that's uh, my I, that's my fear. I await the rapture. That the blue check marks will persist. Or else that uh, they'll come up with a new criteria that recognizes our worthiness. That would be right? bad. Well, it's also unlikely. Uh, they, they should, uh, they, they, yeah, they should be Amer- American and egalitarian about it. In yep. the, they but should but be it's un, risky. It's risky. They should be the opposite of that guy Justin Smith, who is who who is starting this outfit Semaphore, who always wants to hive off an elite class that he can charge advertisers more for reaching. It's too bad that Ben Smith has fallen in with this guy. Let's save that for the parrot room. Your Ben Smith trash talk. Um, no, did that. I've had it in for Justin Smith ever since he gave that incredible party for the Atlantic where the, the, uh, the, elite, the elites least got the party on stage and the non-elites got to sit in the audience and watch the elites party on stage. Yeah. And I okay. thought that would appeal to them. So you okay? can do both, both Ben Smith trashing and Justin Smith trashing in the pair room. I've now done um, it. Okay. Done. So, uh, let's see. Why, so, are you the, why are you the parrot cop, man? Well, you have, we have, let me we go have, off on have, my tangent. We have, you have lit into Justin Smith for that on multiple right. occasions before well, on this very tangent. podcast. It was yeah, it was quick. You, I was, you were admirably succinct. You've, you, you've said a few things about uh, cognitive empathy that have come up once or twice. Too. Name one that's come up twice. Name one. <laughs> NATO. Putin seems to be annoyed that you, we didn't rule out Ukraine joining NATO. Speaking of Putin. So this, uh, I don't know, this letter from the 30, uh, 30 progressives didn't last long. Right. They were stabbed in the back by your hero, Chris Murphy. Is that what happened? Is that the backstory? No. The backstory is obviously what happened is the Republic, the Democratic Party came down to them and said, you fucking idiots, we're trying to draw a distinction between the Democrats who support Ukraine and Kevin McCarthy, who says he doesn't want to write them a blank check and to portray the Republicans as weak on Ukraine. And now you've muddled the waters because you're just as weak as Kevin McCarthy. Uh, You fucked up the midterms and they obviously caved immediately. They really think that's a big issue in the midterms. There's there's no evidence. They have no, they they think they have no issues. So they're grasping at whatever issue they have. Yes. Yes. They tried to make a big issue of the blank check. I also Mark. wonder if the uh, so first of all the letter it had all the caveats you know it was like we support arming Ukraine we do not 
support any peace deal that doesn't have the support of Ukraine. But once you said those two things, and basically the rest of the letter actually doesn't have much practical meaning if you take them literally. But anyway, the rest of the letter is, but still you should pursue diplomacy, possibly a ceasefire and so on. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the Biden White House didn't say to them, you know, come on, we do plan to negotiate eventually, but you're undermining our negotiating position if you signal to Putin that there's weakness right. here in America or something, right. weak, weak, weak support for Ukraine. And, and, and here's here's what Chris Murphy did to your friends at the Quincy Institute, who obviously helped draft the letter, which I agree, the letter was completely reasonable. Rokata, is it obvious actually. that, is it, I, I suspect a lot of anti-war groups were involved okay. in the drafting. Anyway, but, uh, he was, I've seen him cited, but uh, anyway, Here's what Chris Murphy wrote. Ukraine there, is his hawkiest issue, but go ahead. There is moral and strategic peril in sitting down with Putin too early. It risks legitimizing his crimes and handing over parts of Ukraine to Russia in an agreement that Putin won't even honor. Sometimes a bully must be shown the limits of his power before diplomacy can work. Uh, not that bad, but still. Well, it was a first of event. all, again, I predict that they better hurry because I, I don't think the wind is going to still be at Ukraine's back uh, after the winter. And really you know, why? Because the, the, the mobilization is going to take effect. I mean, the big, the big Russian losses have become come from a lack of manpower and there's going to be more bodies in the trenches. And, you know, also, I mean, they've taken the gloves off. I, I mean, the, the, uh, you know, we'll see if they have the stuff to continue to attack Ukraine's power infrastructure, but it does uh, have at least some effect on the military because the, the military logistics, I mean, its main aim may be to demoralize the civilian population, I don't know, but it has an effect on military logistics. Um, so you're saying that the U Ukraine better hurry up with this uh, this retaking of Kyrgyzstan is that the town they're they're, yeah, they're retaking and it's long awaited everybody it's says city. it's about it's, to happen it's the be capital of that province yeah better it, happen before the winter well not it better happen before the sogginess apparently you know apparently the the sogginess sets in in kind of late fall so i gather you may have a few weeks before that starts becoming a problem and you start having to combine yourself to paved and roads. Yeah. Um, and uh, then after that, there is the winter. Yes. And, and, you know, last week we were trying to read the tea leaves and figure out if Russia was going to abandon Kherson city militarily. Apparently the answer is no, they're going to stay and fight for at least a while. Now, a signal that they may think they're going to lose and eventually withdraw is that apparently they took Potemkin's body out of uh, wherever it was buried, you know, he's, he what, you know who Potemkin was? Neither did I. I do the phrase uh, Potemkin Village, but you know who he is? Was? Uh, he, he's the guy who captured Ukraine for the Russians. Maybe. Also, a lover of Catherine the Great, something he allegedly has in common with a horse, but I digress and we don't know what the real story my is. Grandmother, my grandmother wrote a fictional biography of Catherine the Great. What did she say about the horse story? She left out the horse. Uh -huh. She, it was considered I would have led with a horse, man. It was considered risque for <laughs> risque for her time. Okay, so, uh, but 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 anyway, he, he's also the guy apparently who convinced her to annex Crimea. Does that sound familiar? And uh, and, and 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 helped establish this whole idea of what is it, Nova Ruskia or Nova Ru something? The the idea that Southern Ukraine. It, you know, has this organic connection to Russia. But anyway. Right. So that implies that they maybe they think they're not going to be there forever. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, his, this idea of Nova Russia implies the, uh, implies the opposite. But the fact that they took his bones out of Kherson right. suggests that maybe right. they think they're not right. going to hold on. Anyway, um, the uh, so it looks like they're going to fight. And yeah, the U Ukrainians better hurry. They've, they, they've lost a lot of uh, people, I think. The, the casual, you know, the, the offensive team's casualties can get pretty high, and I think they've been pretty high. So we'll see what happens. I mean, what happened to these damn switchblade drones? It looks like Iran has a better version of those th than we do, and they're way cheaper. And that's what Russia is using. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, honestly, well, I think maybe we are outclassed in this one particular area. It wouldn't be the first time that our military industrial complex has produced an expensive weapon that doesn't work as well as the rough and ready weapons on the other side. Uh, the Kalashnikov is arguably a more reliable rifle than 
the ones we had yeah. for a while. Uh, the uh, so uh, yeah, uh, that's entirely possible. The I, I guess I have two things to add to this. I think one is I, I have no beef with the Biden administration if they say, look, of course we're going to negotiate in the end. We want to do it from a position of strength. That's sort of what everybody thinks. Uh, that is not at all contradictory with the left wing letter, really. Uh, but if you talk to the the hardcore neocons, they will say uh, no exit, no negotiations. We, we, we will keep the pedal to the metal until we win totally and let the Russians deal with their defeat on their own, deal with the total defeat on their own. If you look at, uh, you know, Timothy Snyder saying, well, the, you know, the Russians are going to have to rethink their whole identity. It's, you know, it's, it, it's, 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 it can't be based on imperialism and thinking they can invade Ukraine. Uh, well, if we have to wait for the Russians to rethink their whole identity before we can end the war, the war is going to be going on for a long time. Uh, so the danger is not the Biden administration. It is, you know, the Pompeos and the, and the Condi Rices and the, et cetera, et cetera. And I think the Ann Applebaums who just want to go all the way and, and, and hope that, uh, Putin is defeated. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and, uh, you know, and and, 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 and and you know, we we have we can't really think too much about what happens after after we totally defeat them, mm -hmm. uh, even if they don't use nuclear weapons. Uh, well, I mean, you know, Go ahead. the official policy of the Biden administration, you know, is in effect, uh, yeah, let's let's take Crimea and everything because their official position is whatever Ukraine wants in terms of how far they go, as long as they don't invade Russia proper. And, um, you know, that's why it's funny. The term blank check, you know, we talked about its World War I reference last week. Kevin McCarthy used it to mean basically we're not going to give them an infinite amount of money. But I think the more consequential blank check we've given Ukraine is to say we will continue to support you as far as you go up to the up to the borders, including taking Crimea, if you can. And we will not coerce you into diplomacy prior to that. That's our okay. official position. Now, as I have, I have repeatedly said on this podcast, uh, I think that's uh, kind of crazy because, well, short of actually trying to take Crimea, you will, you will, you would start to. I mean, assuming you, the Ukrainian army had the power to do this, and I suppose we have the weapons to give them that would enable them. You know, if we start giving them like hundreds of modern tanks and stuff, who knows? But assuming that uh, happened, assuming we gave them enough weapons for this to be conceivable, well shy of taking Crimea, you would become an existential threat to Putin's regime from his point of view. And at that point, radical escalation up to and including nuclear war uh, is possible. And that's the dilemma we're in. I mean, there's three things that can happen. Russia can turn the tide and start taking a lot more Ukrainian land, A, and I think that's a real possibility after the winter. B, Ukraine can 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 move can get have so much momentum that the risk of 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 catastrophe grows significantly. Or C, things don't change that much relative to where they are now. And 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 if those are the three options, you kind of got to ask, well, why, what are we waiting for in terms of diplomacy, right? I mean, if the Ukrainians, what is the, what is the better option we're waiting for? You have to either lose Ukrainian well, ground, increase, increase catastrophic risk, or things don't change much. But the argue, the argument would be that we're rooting for option, uh, scenario C, where they, both sides grind to a stalemate and, and they, they expend all their, you know, right now, neither wants to give up in, in a okay. year. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be ready emotionally to negotiate in a way they are now and well, politically. So okay. we'll, we'll, that would be, that would be the, the hope, I guess. Okay. Meanwhile, a whole bunch of new people will be dead and maimed. Right. And, right. and, 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 the, and the idea that Ukrainians have a right to push us yeah. into a nuclear war is insane. Well, that's our policy. It, it, it really is. And, and and by the way, there was a, I mean, I wrote this up in today's non-zero newsletter, but one thing I cited was uh, this piece in Foreign Affairs uh, by two people at RAND, um, one of whom, I think it's Samuel Cherup, C-H-A-R-A-P, is going to 
going to be scheduled to be on my podcast on Tuesday. But but they made they're the first kind of establishment figures I've seen who made an argument kind of like this. Although I know that that's long been his view, but I mean in terms of making it in kind of a journal article. Um, but who, who are these people? There are two people at Rand. Uh, let's see their and names. They, they made this argument. I mean the pro negotiation argument. Yeah, kind of, and laying it out right. much the way I laid it out, like well, like. You know, uh, Samuel Cherub, C H A R A P, and Miranda P R I E B E. This is the second point I wanted to make, which is I do not think the blob is unified. I think the blob is cracking. Uh, it's certainly true that, uh, you know, I, I was hanging out with some conservatives uh, at, recently, and they're starting to have grave doubts about this pedal to the metal, go all the way, no exit. Mm -hmm. uh, until we win strategy, and they're starting to sympathize with the Kevin McCarthy and the Jayapal position, which is maybe we should. Have, it's crazy not to have negotiations. Why are we so? Why you know? Why are we risking so much of our uh, our interests on Ukraine? Do we care that much about Ukraine? I just think that that is happening among people who are ordinarily very susceptible to the hardcore blob position. I also think if you look at Richard Hawes, he's not all the, he's not a hundred percent gung ho. He's the he's the Pope of the blog, the Bob, the blob. Sorry, he's retiring he's, though. He announced his retirement, and 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 I just want to go ahead and throw my you hat. Think that's in the no ring. accident. What? You think he's being kicked out for being soft on Ukraine? No, I think I, there's a groundswell support uh, of support for me becoming the head of the Council on Foreign Relations, and so he was in effect pushed out by that. I think Haas is a pretty. Uh, pretty clear sense of where the center of gravity is, don't you? Yeah, he's got a little bit, He, I think he thinks of himself as a realist. He's got a little bit of that in him. I would say only a little. He's pretty blobbish. Uh, the, on the left, as I said last week, you know, blob, blobbish podcast uh, featuring Tommy Vitor and Ben Rhodes had shown as I noted last week, signs of, of dissenting on this issue, saying Ukraine's interests aren't the same as ours. And God bless them, they stuck to their guns after this letter fiasco. And they kind of, you know, more or less defended the letter. They did it partly on pragmatic political grounds. They, they kind of said, uh, don't let the Republicans steal all the votes of people who are skeptical of us. But that itself suggests that they're the, the, the way they read popular opinion uh, you know, this isn't Ukraine hawkishness isn't necessarily a huge winning issue. Right. I don't I agree. And I also don't think it matters that they withdrew the letter. If you're Putin and you're Zelensky, you've read the letter. You know they still agree with it, even if they withdrew it. Who cares if they actually yeah, you know, if they actually withdraw it? You know that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a softening of support for Ukraine on the left as well as the right. right. Yeah, and fact, the second Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, in fact, the withdrawal almost may look from their point of view like, oh, they told the truth and they're trying to sweep it back under the rug, you know, and they want to keep us from knowing about this cinema. But now we know. Anyway, go right. ahead. And the second point is there are there are people on 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 the neocon side and the the sort of Bill Crystal side who are saying, well, the you know, the Jayapal letter, they, uh, you know, they, they were dissenting from our the course of the war, but they're doing it for very different reasons than Kevin McCarthy and the Trumpist right. Uh, no, they're not. They're, they're, the, the reasons are basically, the, uh, from Kevin McCarthy and Jayapal, are basically the same. We're spending a lot of money, we're killing a lot of people, we're taking a risk of nuclear war, and it's not that much in our interest. Our interests don't justify it. So it's a, it's a little like, to my mind, it's like the anti-porn feminist, I think Catherine McKinnon, is that her name? The That's big, fine. the anti-porn feminists who made a big show of, we we don't like porn, but our reasons for hating porn are completely different than Jerry Falwell's reasons for hating porn and the moral majority. No, they weren't. They were both, they, uh, they there was a substantial overlap. The, they both thought that it was degrading to women to have porn, uh, okay? They, were, they, were, there was, they had more in common with Jerry Falwell than they were willing to admit. Likewise, oh. Jaya Pauly, Kevin McCarthy, have a, basically are, a bipartisan grounds for opposition to the to to the current course in Ukraine, and we shouldn't 
you but know, there are differences. There are differences. Okay, Certainly between are. me and the Trumpist right on these issues. The Trumpist right is like, screw them. They're Ukraine. We're us. Fuck this. I, uh, you know, I am more of a globalist and I think it is important to try to preserve uh, respect for the idea that you don't invade sovereign countries. It is in America's interest to do that, in our long-term interest to do that. Unfortunately, A, for the reasons I just laid out, it's just, as a practical matter, the risks associated with rolling Russia all the way back are unacceptable. But, but more than that, the fact that we have ourselves undermined the norm of respecting the law against transborder aggression has has reduced the value of reinforcing it here, you know? And it's one reason, well, you know, Putin just gave a speech this week appealing to like the global South and the various people who hate America. And there's a lot of them. And one reason is they see this hypocrisy. Well, the hypocrisy is bad, but the, that, that doesn't, you know, it's the tribute that vice pays to virtue. It doesn't mean the virtue is not worth pursuing. Or, no, but again, uh, I, w- I want to be clear. I'm making a kind of, uh, you know, maybe rigorous is too highfalutin a term for it. But I am saying that the actual practical value of reinforcing this norm by driving them back to the borders, if we could do that, is lower. The practical consequence is of less value now than it would be if we had respected the norm and not done Iraq, Kosovo, exceeded the UN mandate in Libya by going for regime change and shit like that. that I'm, I'm making a, a, you know... This is an analytical point. Well, sure. I'm, not, I'm not just saying hypocrisy is bad. I'm kind of explaining why hypocrisy is bad. You know, you, 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 it does. Uh, re, hypocrisy that is, uh, you know, revealed does have the effect of undermining a normative system and reducing the value of the future enforcement of sure. the norms. Sure. And that, uh, but on uh, first dealing with the first point, it, it, saying that they're Trumpists who don't believe in any international rules and, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and America first, and, uh, you know, uh, even onto Fortress America. That's an argument with them, and that's, a, that's, a, that's certainly a part of the Trumpist coalition, but that's not an argument with Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy's just saying we don't want to write him a blank check. He, they, he supported yeah, Ukraine I don't, I don't in the past. He, he gave a statement very similar to the, the left wingers saying, you know, we've supported Ukraine, but we don't want to run, write him a blank yeah, check. But if you- so so it, it, it's unfair to tar him. It well, might, might be applicable. Might be applicable to Rand Paul. Well, exactly. He's talking about the whole Republicans' constituency, which does include some of the sentiment I've described. Who is talking? McCarthy. Is- McCarthy. He's talking about why in Congress, you know, you're not you're going to get a certain sentiment, and I'm saying some of that sentiment is of the Trumpist kind, right. where it's like, screw us, we're going to break all the laws we want, we're going to assassinate Soleimani, we're going to do this and that, we don't give a shit, and we don't give a fuck about Ukraine. That I don't think Trumpist I don't think reason. Rand Paul is for assassinating Soleimani and throwing our weight around. Well, he he actually might not be. Uh, he's more he's more of a uh, whatever the whatever the word but, is. Uh, they're all, non-intervention. But I'll tell you one thing, it, it's not easy to find a Republican congressman who will tell you that that was a mistake. Good luck with that. Or a Democrat, such as the state of our foreign policy establishment. Um, can I quickly say one thing? Uh, the the This dirty bomb thing, like, you know, you heard like Russia um, says, you know, they, they're def- their defense minister called his peers and said, we have information that Ukraine is going to do a dirty nuclear bomb, which is this very crude thing. You can, you can use like fire alarm stuff to put it together. And right. it, it just creates radiation. And the idea Russia's claim was it would be a false flag attack. Ukraine would point to the ra- evidence of radiation and say, Russia did this. Um, and we, yeah, just go around and get medical waste from hospitals. Sure. And yeah, yeah, not hard to do. Yeah. And, you know, virtually all of the coverage of this in America and, and in the parrot room, I'll, I'll give you one example, maybe because we're about to run out of time here, um, has just not even gone through the motions of taking taking seriously the possibility. This is the alarm. That okay. means it's time to go. The one I said, but but uh, it's not even taken uh, seriously the possibility that either A, 
they actually have such evidence, or B, they at least believe it's true. And when you think about, if you try to explain why would Russia be saying this, I think the most plausible explanation is they think it's true, A, and B, the fact is none of us know enough about the Ukrainian government to be sure there is not a faction within it, like the Azov Brigade, who would try something like this if they thought it could bring the West into the war, which is obviously in their interest as they understand it. But the entire American media is just starting off with a premise that's been, they've been instructed to obey by the Institute for the Study of War, which they've all taken as like the arbiter of truth, which is that, this, oh no, and, and I should say the whole blob, it just happens automatically that, that you reflexively dismiss uh, you know, everything Russia says. And I think we need to take more seriously the possibility that some of these things are true. I will talk more uh, about that in a period. Um, why, uh, why would they want more U.S. intervention? They're doing pretty well. And, uh, and uh, if, if, if the U.S. actually intervenes on the side of, of Ukraine, then it becomes World War III and Ukraine might just be wiped out. I mean, it, it's, 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 uh, it seems to be a, a bad move. They, they, they want a few well, more weapons, but they want, I think they would want well, us to first of all, stay out of it. First of all, remember, the perception that they're doing really well on the battlefield now is mediated, you know, by Western media, by, which by basically the does, War. does well, yeah, and a bunch of other they basically do public relations for Ukraine. They know better. They they know look, the Putin's mobilization from his point of view, it went off okay. Have you heard about any big demonstrations in Russia? He could drum up another couple hundred thousand if he needed to, probably. And they're aware of that. They're aware that Russia has escalated and is now going after their infrastructure. And they're aware of the casualty numbers that they are refusing to release. Uh, uh, and, 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 and they're aware that, you know, they're aware of a lot of the things, I think, that are not really coming through. And that's speculation. I, but they know that this is not, they do not face assured victory here. If you read The Economist, Russian elites are already having grave doubts about Putin thinking about a successor. They're aware of the brain drain. Of people fleeing Russia, I think they're they're mainly going to Serbia now. Bizarrely, uh, not so bizarrely, uh, and uh, and and that uh, so that you, the Ukrainians may think, well, this is one mechanism that might actually end the war if mm. Putin starts to worry about his uh, his foothold with the elite. Oh, we can we can talk about that. Uh, the, the I mean, the final thing is though. They're, I don't mean they're imagining, let's turn it into World War III. They're imagining, let's get the U.S. to give us a bunch of tanks or something, right? That's what they're, I, and I'm not saying they're doing, I don't know that, there's, that, that that anyone anywhere in the government is planning a false flag attack. I'm just saying it's crazy for us to reflexively dismiss things like this when everything we know about war, human nature, and politics suggests that things like this happen in the world. Um and, I don't. And, I don't quite believe it, but I wouldn't dismiss it. I, I'm not. I'm not saying it's true. But remember, Mickey, we now know that according to the Biden administration, uh, the Zelensky government planted a bomb in a car driven by a woman in Russia, uh, with the goal of either killing her or her and her father. We don't know which, but it was because of their expressed political views. And they're in Russia. That's pretty wild, you know. But that wasn't a false flag event. Well, it was in the sense that they didn't own up to it. Uh, and, and yeah, some, but they, they were they were they were killing their enemies. They weren't. Well, actually, there was some attempt attacking to, themselves. Uh, there was some attempt to depict it as indigenous in origin. I, I'm not saying it was a false flag attack, Mickey. I'm saying, you know, and the Biden administration said we don't know if Zelensky was aware of this. And uh, you know, we, we, the idea that you know Ukraine, wait, they're us, right? They wouldn't do bad things. We don't know. We, you know, first of all. Uh, if you're in the situation they're in, it's not a bad thing. You want as much support as you can get. And, you, and I think you're, you have a right to feel desperate when you've got uh, bombs raining down on all of your electricity generators right. um, and, and, and various other things happening. So right. it's not like an indictment of them that this is possible. But, but it's, also, it, it's also true that a dirty bomb would be, you know, Putin is looking for something that would be an escalation but short of using a small tactical nuclear weapon, our dirty bomb sort of fits the fits that slot, right? 
So it's okay. a logical this it's is, a logical step for him to take. This is what I want to pursue in the parrot room is like, what is the scenario whereby it's Russia that would do this, which is the counterclaim. That Russia is preparing the ground to do this themselves. That's the counterclaim. Right. I want to examine that logic. So what do you want to talk about in the parrot room? Okay, well, uh, first, you uh, I, last week, and I think it was in the parrot room, you accused me of getting a poll wrong where I said immigration was the number three issue. I withdraw I, the I, accusation. Uh, I was expecting a very gracious apology, and I no, guess... No, I'm not doing it graciously. Why not? That's just not in me. That's my problem. Yeah. Doesn't, your Buddhist, that. doesn't your Buddhist training tell you to be gracious? It, it tells me to be equanimous, and I'm feeling perfectly still and calm right now. <laughs> okay. So you... Okay. Well, um, I expect something more theatrical than that, but... I think you um, promised. I think you promised not to host the parrot room if you if you uh, if you turned out to be wrong. Did I? I'm willing to you take said the night something off. Something like that. You promised you, something dramatic. You proposing I take the day off? I'm game. I am. I I I'm proposing some dramatic groveling. Uh, Renting of garments. Renting of garments. Renting of garments is good. The 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 gifting of huge sums of money. Uh, you know, liquidated damages, all accepted. Um. What do we have to talk about? I, we have to, with the Sunak administration, he did something dramatic, which we can talk about. Uh, also, uh, Luce, are we allowed to just pronounce his first name Richie? That would be easier. Go ahead. What else? Did I mispronounce Sunak? How hard is no, it? No, 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 no. I said, you know? never mind. Oh, um, uh, you mean just because he's rich? No, his first name looks kind of like Richie, but you're not, but that's not the pronunciation. Uh, what is the pronunciation? Something like Rishi, I think, or I yeah. don't know. He is rich. Yeah. He's super rich. He's super rich. Um, uh, uh, and short. Something he has in common with Putin. He's, he's too rich and too short. Watch out, uh, Ireland. Um, uh, Lucienne Goldberg died, and I have a few things to say about her. She was in a, a fascinating figure, and if Hollywood wants to make a movie. They should make a movie about her life. Uh, yeah, I had forgotten about the connection to what Linda Tripp or something, but we can talk about this. Um, that, that was uh, and, and 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 she's she's uh, Jonah Goldberg's mother. So our condolences to him. Yes, uh, and I'll have more to about more to say about that. Uh, there's uh, an unconvincing argument that uh, there's this big case involving the independent state legislature theory, and I'm not completely up to speed on it, but there are these people who, who claim that it's not really as creating the threat to democracy that uh, people on the left claim it is. And these are not people on the right so much as law scholars who say, uh, thanks to a lot of leftish legal doctrines, the state legislatures can't really go berserk and throw a close election to the Republicans. And I'm not quite convinced. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, there's um, a bunch of life lessons, Bob, that, uh, that, that uh, seem to be obvious uh, on ways to live and live a better life that are sort of coming together and we need to give them a name. Uh, and, and, uh, mm, intriguing. The, the, I, I have, I, I've been driving a, a lot, uh, and I've noticed everywhere I go, there are help wanted signs out. If you get lost, go off the beaten track, you wander in a, a warehouse area where there are factories. Uh, they all have signs saying, we're hiring. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to square that with the, uh, we're about to be in a huge recession uh, argument. And uh, it also raises a, a perennial issue about uh, inflation and wages that I want to raise again. Uh, so in other words, I don't have much to talk about, but we'll keep it short. Okay, uh, I want to talk about the aforementioned uh, dirty bomb scenario. I want to talk about uh, Xi Jinping in China. I want to say something I promised to say, address last week in the parrot room, failed to, uh, and also talk a little about this podcast I've been listening to about Xi Jinping. Can and you, uh, can you explain the who removal? Well, I, I, let's talk about the who thing. Okay. It's okay. it's I I I think 
there's been a little little over reading of that i mean i think no no particular reading i just think we don't have a clue as to what happened there but um but i it's weird enough that it would be interesting to talk about um i want to talk about i said something last week i don't know if i said it here in the parrot room i took a little shit for it in the parrot room comments i think somewhere i predictably took shit when i said uh, i think uh, reports of russia involuntarily uh moving uh, p- moving people who don't want to be in Russia to Russia have been overblown. By that, I mean, I think the extent of it has been exaggerated. I want to um, I want to talk about what I mean by that, what evidence I have of that. And, and I want to I want to say now what the general why that matters, because I think th- th- there are people who like if you say things like that, they just can't come up with an explanation for why you would keep saying things like this if you weren't just out to defend Vladimir Putin. Oh, that reminds me, Joe Cirincioni's, I want to say a little more about Cirincioni's uh, claim that there is a, quote, pro-Putin axis in America of that draws on all, you know, right, left, center. Um, but uh, <clears throat> they can't. And I so I want to explain like why is it you would say things like that and and the and and the reason is I think just as there is danger in underestimating evil the magnitude of the badness of things doing there's danger in overestimating it's like you certainly wouldn't want to uh, <clears throat> not know in World War II that Hitler wasn't doing the Holocaust because if you know that you know he has to be stopped at all costs at the same time you wouldn't want to be fighting some somebody where you thought they were doing that and they weren't uh, because that would, uh, you know, screw up your ideas about circumstances under which you were willing to settle for peace and so on. And Saddam not having weapons of mass destruction would fit that category. Yeah. Um, and also, speaking of Saddam, I mean, uh, some of us are old enough to remember in the first Persian Gulf War, you know, the woman who came before Congress and testified she had seen in Saddam's Iraq. People, un, or, or maybe it was in Kuwait, done by the soldiers, Iraqi soldiers, unplug the incubators of babies. And it just turned out to be a total lie. She was actually, I think, from a, a public relations agency or something. She was she was related to, anyway, it was total I lie. I think it was all, all cooked up by the gray public yeah. relations agency. And, and I'm not saying uh, there, there, there's something like that going on. I'm just saying I, I, there's a reason I want to be very careful in assessing the claims of how bad whatever anybody's doing is. But, uh okay uh didn't didn't uh a, a very prominent russian woman go on national tv and say hey i have a new child a, I, new, I wanna, a new russian child oh they're definitely Fresh adopting from i want to talk i want to talk about that new york times piece on adoption actually on the adoption of you okay. uh, uh of re- ukrainian children by russians because that okay. that's an interesting that's an interesting case the the other another thing i wanted to t- raise that i i forgot to raise uh, when we were talking about Ukraine, was I, I guess I don't understand what's in it, this drive for victory and make Putin, make Russia reassess its national identity and the the people who argue for that, what's in it for them? Why why are they motivated to do that? Wait, to do which thing? To 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 push for the humiliation of Putin. Oh, and ignoring negotiations until. Forever, basically. Oh well, until every last answer. Russian shoulder is kicked out of Ukraine. I mean, and we, and, uh, and Putin is faced with an utter, devastating, humiliating defeat. Uh, we can talk about that. I mean, there's, I, I can, you know, if it weren't for the risks raised by pushing things that far, I, I think it would be great. Um, um, and I'll explain why in the pair room. Um, okay. So, anything uh, else? Anything? Anything light? Anything light? Light and cultural? Not this week. Lucienne is sort of cultural. Not like this. In mm-hmm. light of, not exactly it actually a light is story. light. She was, a, she was a, a force of... She had a lot of great gossip. There were even great gossip in her obituary, which we can go into. She was an early and important figure in the, in, her, in, the, in the kind of bloggish world. There's a good story that Carl Bernstein... I heard Carl Bernstein say about his interactions with her okay uh so but we will talk about that and who knows what else uh fun 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 that we're trying to get the parrot to say that fun 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 and yeah, that was kind there of a, I, I don't know the parrot could maybe use some batteries we'll fix that 
in between now and the parent room. Okay. A weak show by the parent. Okay. Patreon.com slash parent room. See you there. Okay. See ya.